The Bohai Strait Tunnel or Yantai Dalian Tunnel project proposes the construction of an underwater tunnel to connect Dalian and the Liaoning Peninsula to Yantai and the Shandong Peninsula. Another name for the project is the Cross Bohai Strait Channel. The biodiversity of the Bohai Strait, dotted with rich island ecosystems, would be impacted. Length of the Tunnel Crossing the Bohai Strait, the tunnel would be 123 kilometers long, and 90 kilometers of it would be underwater. This would exceed the combined lengths of the two longest undersea tunnels on Earth, the Seikan Tunnel and the Channel Tunnel. The planned high-speed railway would traverse the Bohai Strait, connecting Dalian in the south of the Liaoning province with the Shandong province city of Yantai. It will reduce travel time across the Bohai Strait to a mere 40 minutes. At present, a ferry ride across the bay takes about 8 hours, while traveling between the two cities by vehicle means converting 1,400 kilometers of coastal roads. Location In the waters of Panglai in the Shandong province, there are 151 islands strung out in the province. 151 islands strung out in a line marking the boundary between the Bohai Strait and Yellow Seas. The Changshan Archipelago, as it is known, is an abundant habitat for migratory fish, birds, and seals. It is one of 24 prime candidates for the new status of a national marine park. But over the last two decades, the local government has been hoping to use the archipelago to drill a rail tunnel underneath the Bohai Strait, thereby linking the major northeastern cities of Yantai and Dalian. Cars and passengers could ride on the trains, slashing travel times between Shandong and Liaoning provinces from 10 hours to less than one. Mega Tunneling The Bohai Sea is largely enclosed. Only a 100km strait forms its opening, separating Yantai and Dalian. Circling the sea to travel between the two metropolises is a 1,500km trip. The tunnel would reduce the travel time to under an hour and surpass in length the world's longest subterranean passages. The Seikan Tunnel in Japan and the Channel Tunnel connecting the UK and mainland Europe. Lu Dadao of the Chinese Academy of Sciences has said that a tunnel across the Bohai would transform transportation in China. By avoiding the hubs in Beijing and Tianjin, it would relieve pressure on railways between Beijing and Tianjin, Beijing and Shanghai, and even Beijing and Guangzhou. Du Yan Liang of the Chinese Academy of Engineering Sciences told the paper that the tunnel would also better connect the old industrial area of the Northeast, the Bohai Economic Area and the Yangtze Delta. Since Yantai Deputy Mayor Lu Xinhua first proposed the idea in 1992, more than 10 years of studies have been carried out. In 2011, the State Council called for further research as part of the Blue Economic Development Plans for the Shandong Peninsula thus giving the tunnel national strategic importance. Then in 2012, the State Council commissioned the Chinese Academy of Engineering Sciences to investigate. Provincial plans for the 13th five-year plan also covered preparatory work on the project. Construction would be a costly, difficult, and environmentally risky undertaking. Hence the 27-year delay. Preliminary studies for the Seikan and Channel Tunnels were similarly long processes. Various questions have to be answered aside from economic viability. Should it be constructed? Can the risk of earthquakes be mitigated? Soon Jun, also of the Chinese Academy of Engineering Sciences, had put the initial project budget at 300 billion yuan or 44 billion US dollars, more than the 200 billion paid for the Three Gorges Dam with a construction time of 15 years. But commentators have pointed to the Hangzhou Bay Bridge, which cost 20 billion yuan rather than the expected 11.8 billion, citing that these estimates are often on the lower side. An important ecology. There is another greener version for the Bohai Strait. Since Xi Jinping got behind the idea of the ecological civilization in 2012, conservation has become a much higher priority in China. That sped up the building of a national park system intended to increase the amount of protected land in China and consolidate the fragmented and overlapping existing system. In 2015, the State Council approved trials of national parks in nine provinces. In 2017, it published overall plans for establishing the system. Huge land-based national parks were planned to protect animal habitats and ecosystems. Meanwhile, the State Oceanic Administration 
now part of the Ministry of Natural Resources, identified two dozen possible sites for marine parks, including the Changshan Archipelago. It is one of China's most important sites of migratory birds, with almost one quarter of all China's bird species passing through. It's also a habitat and breeding ground for the spotted seal, a class 2 protected species protected by the government. Though only 56.8 square kilometers in size, smaller than the size enclosed by Beijing's Second Ring Road, the islands are already home to a marine park, geopark, forest park, and bird reserve. Wang Yumei of London University thinks that environmental impact assessments for the tunnel projects should pay special attention to migratory birds and a spotted seal. So far, there has been no research on these species. Soon Feng Hua of the Chinese Academy of Sciences has written for the need for serious research into all issues associated with construction and the tunnel. We must not proceed until these questions are fully understood. Environmental Risks Two possible building approaches are currently preferred. A single underground tunnel or a cross-island version, mixing tunnels and bridges to span the Changshan Archipelago. Construction on the islands will be necessary whichever approach is chosen, as the single tunnel will require vertical shafts to be dug on two islands to facilitate excavation and ensure safe operations. The bridges required for the mixed approach would affect a larger area. Wang Yu Mei has written of the environmental impact. Large-scale temporary infrastructure and buildings would be built, machinery would have to be moved about, and construction workers would be working around. All of this would disturb the ground. She also points out other factors worthy of consideration. Storage of excavated earth, use of land for construction, noise, water and dust pollution, and pollutants from vehicles using the tunnel. Though the late head of the project team, Wang Mengshu, was clear the tunnel should be built and land has been set aside in both Yantai and Dalian, many doubts have been raised about its necessity and feasibility. To date, no detailed plans have been made available for either the tunnel or the National Marine Park. The State Council has ordered research and proposals for national park sites and their number and size, but has not put forward plans for specific parks, either on land or water. Trials of the national park system are underway at 10 sites, which are due to be considered for formal national park status in 2020. Further plans for national land and marine parks will be clearer once lessons from the trail have been learned. There is still a long way to go before the tunnel construction starts. Detailed surveys of local geology and hydrology can only be approved. That will be followed by feasibility and cost studies. And finally, a go-ahead from the state council. An environmental impact assessment will also be needed. The state has not yet fired the starting gun in either case. Wang Yamin, a professor at Chandong University, thinks that both the tunnel and the park are needed, but more data and analysis are required to see if they can coexist. The tunnel needs to be approached very carefully with rigorous formal analysis, with wildlife considered and expects involved, he said. The tension between the environment and development is an old one, but often for China, development has been central. Environmental protection is necessary to ensure that development is sustainable. Future Updates Authorities expect 29,100 vehicles and 126,000 passenger trips to cross the bridge-slash-tunnel daily. But who gets to travel the bridge now? The priority appears to be trade and tourists. Goods manufactured on the western end of the Pearl River Delta can now reach the container port and international airport of Hong Kong in 45 minutes. And the tourist landing at Hong Kong International Airport now has another option to reach Macau instead of taking a ferry. All of the vehicles that will be allowed on the bridge, including trucks, tour buses, shuttles and select private cars, will require permits from all three jurisdictions. All three jurisdictions will also require passengers to clear immigration and customs. That's it for this one, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider liking it and sharing it with someone else who might enjoy it. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this and hit that bell icon if you never want to miss another video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.